Time now for an update on the day's business news and China's President Xi Jinping is set to arrive in Italy this Thursday. Rome has sparked some concern among its peers by planning to join Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative. For more, we're joined on set by Yuka Roya. Yuka. Well, if the Gargantuan project is really at the heart of President Xi's foreign policy strategy, often described as the Silk Road of the 21st century. It aims to strengthen infrastructure, trade and investment links between China and around 70 countries that together account for about a third of global GDP and three-fifths of the population. But it has also sparked concern over China's dominance. European leaders are set to discuss ways to limit China's influence on the continent at their summit dinner in Brussels today. Earlier, our Beijing correspondent Charles Pellegrin explained this more in detail. Critics of the Belt and Road Initiative say that these uh, infrastructure and investment projects are rarely win-win, as the Chinese would like to put it, and actually only play in favor of uh, the Chinese government or Chinese companies. Uh, in Europe, uh, there's, uh, there's considerable uh, concern about one particular issue, which is the issue of reciprocity. Why should European markets accept all these Chinese investments on the European heartland when European firms are not able to freely uh, invest in the Chinese market or not on an equal, fit, uh, equal footing with uh, Chinese firms. And um, that's why uh, in the last few weeks, actually, uh, the European Union is trying to uh, coordinate its uh, position with regards to China, uh, even labeling Beijing as a systemic rival in terms of its uh, economic values. And they're actually uh, pushing for a uh, measure that would limit uh, the access to uh, EU public tenders to uh, companies companies from, from countries that have uh, protectionist policies, including China. And this is a sizable market. This is about uh, $2.4 trillion uh, a year. Uh, another uh, issue, another critique of, uh, these, uh, of the, this Belt and Road Initiative is the issue of uh, debt trap diplomacy, basically saying that China is making all these investments, lending all this money for these infrastructure projects to countries that don't necessarily have the ability to actually pay back that money. And that this uh, locks this country into a debt trap where they then have to hand over the assets to uh, the Chinese government. Charles Pellegrin, our Beijing correspondent, speaking a little while ago. Uh, Boeing, next, uh, continues to be under pressure nearly two weeks after the fatal crash of the Ethiopian Airlines jet. On Wednesday, U.S. lawmakers called for the plane maker's executives to testify about the two recent crashes involving its 737 MAX aircraft. Questions are also being raised about the way the U.S. aviation regulator FAA approved the model as Boeing is working on a software update to get the grounded fleet flying again. Wasim Korne reports. U.S. federal investigators are seeking answers following the crash of two Boeing 737 MAX aircraft less than five months apart. Officials from the Transportation and Justice Departments as well as the FBI have been looking into the FAA's approval of the aircraft software. The investigation began shortly after Lion Air Flight 610 crashed in Indonesia in October. The inquiry has focused on the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS. MCAS is a stall prevention measure that officials believe may have contributed to the Lion Air and Ethiopian Airlines accidents. A lot of suspicion has focused on the MCAS system, which is a device that basically uh, adjusts the plane in flight automatically if it senses that the plane is going into a stall. At least one FAA official was contacted in the weeks following the Lion Air crash to ask how the MCAS software was certified. A Seattle Times report published on Sunday revealed the FAA delegated much of the plane's safety assessments to Boeing itself. But the investigation has also focused on why pilots were mostly unaware of the system. U.S. and European manuals for the 737 MAX include no information about MCAS. Still, analysts say it is unlikely to be the sole reason behind the crash. Insufficient training or inadequate crew procedures may also be to blame. Both EU and Canadian regulators have said they would be conducting their own inquiries into the 737 MAX. The aircraft is an upgraded version of the Boeing 737, the best-selling aircraft in history. Wasim Kornay reporting there. 
Let's take a quick look at the markets now. And here in Europe, trading started on a cautious note. This following on from the US Federal Reserve's decision yesterday to leave interest rates unchanged and signalling that there wouldn't be any rate hikes uh, throughout the year. As you can see, London's FTSE up, though that's because of a fall in pound. Asian markets were a mixed bag as well as fears over the US-China trade battle linger after President Trump said increased tariffs on Chinese goods could remain in place for a substantial period. U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin will visit China next week for a new round of talks. And that's it for business for now. Thanks a lot, Yuka. Yuka Roy there.